Hi everyone, it's Paola. Welcome back to my channel, my art graphic design channel. Please follow me on Instagram. Please check out my Patreon. Please check out how to donate to my channel below. Okay, let's get going today. So I'm really excited to share with you today's video because I was looking through one of my graphic design resource books that I have. So fun to have. Always recommend having design books. So helpful resources and pretty to look at on your shelf. So I have been looking through this one, graphic design, the new basics and Ellen Lupton, what a queen of graphic design um but yes definitely definitely check this book out but i will be showing you some of it today i thought we would go through 10 exercises and tips to get started in graphic design one if you are new to graphic design and you want to learn where to start i think this is going to be a great resource for you this book would definitely be a great resource for you but hopefully my video can help no design gatekeeping here design should be accessible to everyone. So it will definitely help you if you're getting started and you want to have some exercises and some resources to get you going. And then also if you're more advanced in graphic design, a graphic designer like me, uh, this is going to be really helpful too because I found some exercises in here that I thought, oh, I should go through and do these. Like as soon as I read them, I'm like, oh, that would be helpful for me. So this is going to be hopefully helpful for all of you no matter what stage of designer you are. So that's what you have to look forward to. Okay, let's get going into 10 activities and ideas in design. This video is sponsored by ReadyMag. So I've worked with them before, but ReadyMag is an online browser-based tool to create websites, presentations, portfolios, whatever you like, and all of that without coding. There's a library of over 500,000 photos that you can use. There's over 3,000 fonts you can use. It's great for typography lovers because you can do so much with text and layout, and you can animate any widget on there and create something spectacular in your layout. So using ReadyMag is completely free. All you have to do is sign up, no credit card needed, and you can create up to one website. And if you're just starting out, they have tons of templates to use. So like I said, perfect for creating an online website and all without coding. So the first 100 people to use the code Paola will get 25% off their first purchase. The link is in the description. So thank you so much ReadyMag for sponsoring. So as you can see, I tabbed them all out here. I did my research for you guys. I'm here to help. Okay, so these are in no particular order, but they definitely get a little bit more advanced as I go through, but definitely like all these exercises you can do no matter where you're at. So my first one is an exercise in symmetry and asymmetry. So symmetry can demonstrate balance and asymmetry can kind of demonstrate off balance and have things be a little more exciting and different. So I encourage you to do an exercise like this where you maybe take a shape. I think organic shapes are great, circles, stuff like that and just show different forms of symmetry and asymmetry. Symmetry being two identical circles right next to each other. That could be one exercise. And then another exercise could be a big circle on top of one small circle, making it look imbalanced. That can be asymmetry. So an exercise like that is definitely helpful no matter what your level, like going through these repetitive types of exercises, they can be a little mundane and you can feel a little bit like repetitive, annoying, but this is going to be so helpful in your journey as a designer. This is the type of stuff I did in school, in classes, a lot of repetitive little exercises and it helped so, so much. So going off of symmetry, scale. So scale is relative. That's what it says. So it says a graphic element can appear larger or smaller depending on the size, placement, and color of the elements around it. When elements are all the same size, the design feels flat. So this is where you can practice like a design feeling dynamic, putting in emphasis on an object or something that you want to put emphasis on. I think what's interesting here is using a familiar object and then just going crazy with the different scales of an object to see what kind of dynamic design you can create. And then going off of that, scale, depth, and motion. So if you're done using objects and you want to use typography, you can start making these types of exercises to show motion, movement in type that also works with scale in a new way. It says here, in the typographic compositions shown here, designers worked with one word or a pair of words and used changes in scale as well as placement on the page to convey the meaning of the word or word pair. Contrasts in scale can imply motion or depth as well as express differences in importance. So like I said, scale shows importance, it shows the emphasis. If a design is all one size objects, one size things, it can fall flat. So work with this black and white, simple, just artboards, whatever you wanna work in and figure out these new design ideas. Now, if you wanna keep working in typography, this is a great exercise that actually I feel like would be really, really helpful if you are more seasoned in design, um, but also if you're getting started and you wanna learn more about typography and it's 
five squares, 10 inches. So let me read what this exercise is. It says designers composed five justified squares of type inside a 10 inch frame. Variation of type, style, texture, and value were achieved by combining combining contrasting characteristics such as old style italic serifs, uniformly weighted sand serif, geometric slab serif, so on. So using a lot of different typefaces create different layouts, compositions in five squares. So make five squares on a 10 inch canvas and make a composition. I think this is such a good exercise for all levels of design. I think it can be easy but it can also be challenging it, especially if you know more about typography and you really want to challenge yourself and push yourself to create great combinations create layout this is a thing that i think would be really really good for you i will definitely be doing this exercise now while you could have applied color probably to those exercises so far i also want you to explore with color in general if you are getting started in design and i think a great way of learning about that at least if you're getting started is learning the color wheel learning the basic uh combinations of color and what those are again no gatekeeping here i'm here to help you like if you don't know and you don't have a resource let me be that resource for you. So this is a little bit about basic color theory. I'll show it on the screen now and you can just take a look and get started in learning about colors. Listen guys, sometimes I get like mean comments from people being like, stop sharing online that anyone can be a designer. You're setting up people for failure. And I'm really not trying to do that. I'm trying to help you in any way. And I think saying that you need to have this and this and this to be a designer and have the exact same path as someone who struggled through it or whatever is very classist. And you know, like it's not accessible. It's not making design accessible. If you want to work hard and you want to try these exercises, is you want to get started you have to find those resources yourself sometimes even if you are going to school in the top art school or whatever there's so many ways to be a designer and i don't want to tell you that you can't do it and i'm not going to tell you that you're going to be a millionaire because of it i'm here to help you find resources find your way through and navigate design in an accessible easy way because it's not a boys club full of people who are not going to let you get to the top okay it should be supportive and that's what I want to help contribute toward that in the design community. I want to be a supportive person. Okay, mini rant over, let's move on. So working more with letter forms, I love letter forms, I love typography, so this would be another great exercise for that is letter form abstraction. So instead of taking objects or anything like that and working with scale, this is a kind of way to work with scale in letter forms because this would be creating like typing out a letter or whatever and making it really big to the point where you make your canvas, you make your artboard abstract, you make it turn into an abstract shape. And I think this is a great exercise to just kind of get like loose, get free and kind of feel out what you can make and see what you can make, see if it's exciting, see if it looks ugly, make the ugliest thing ever, make the prettiest thing ever, whatever you want, this is a great way to do that. It's like about shaking out those creative juices, you know what I mean? <laughs> Another helpful thing if you're getting started in design but this will also be helpful for you who know things about design. Margins, bleeds, things like that. This is a great way to do that. Take a photo and start working with margins. Margins are basically like taking the photo to the edge of the paper, taking the photo and making a frame around it, framing it with negative space. Margins can make a, a new thing out of your photo. It can make it dynamic, it can make it interesting. So I encourage you to work with that, work with the bleeds. Bleeds are like when it goes to the edge, margins are when you have something around, that's the margin, the negative space around the edge. And then you can work with framing image and text. So this is where it gets a little more advanced. So if you are like, okay, I'm over it, I don't wanna work with margins and bleeds anymore, uh, work with text adding text to a photo to create something new, creating a poster, creating something that is eye-catching. A lot of marketing looks like this. So what can you do to make something eye-catching if you are a marketer or an advertiser for something? Now I'm a little more advanced, taking information and using hierarchy. So take a group of information, you can get it off any website, a restaurant, or whatever, like a brand that has info about their brand. Take all that information, copy, paste, put it into a thing, and then work with the information and create a hierarchy. Show what is the most important, what you think is the most important. Go through a few different versions, showing different ways of showing hierarchy. Like, what if you made this little blurb of information the most important thing? What if you 
you made the title the most important thing and then had smaller information below. Go through these exercises and see what you can create to just work on your hierarchy skills, see what you can put together in a layout editorial style. I think that's a great one if you're a little more advanced and you want to get going in layout design. Okay, now this one's just a fun one so you can do it no matter what your level, cutting and pasting. So it says here, the Cubist painters popularized collage in the early 20th century. By combining bits of printed paper with their own drawn and painted surfaces, they created an artistic technique that profoundly influenced both the design and the fine arts. So they were definitely designers in the Cubist period, but I also want to highlight that there were a lot of women and people of color artists doing this in the 20th century. and collage art is a big thing if you want to look into that you know the black panthers were doing that there's a lot of cool accessible resources out there to look into different people who were doing it and not just the cubists because a lot of misogyny in that time anyway i digress from my little art history statement but creating collage is so much fun and a great design exercise to get going with layout you can use physical items but actually let me get to that in a second but using negative space using really big objects just creating collage maybe out of digital photos or maybe out of physical photos and you know combining and laying things out do something fun that's a fun exercise that really gets your design skills going and refined and like i said physical layers last but not least is using physical virtual and temporal layers to create these little layouts but i think this is great creating kind of collage in digital in abstract in just object forms uh like just all these squares and stuff i think it's great but basically the exercise here is creating something physical and then translating it into digital shapes so can you do that can you work with that that's a great exercise to get going can you take something physical into digital as a designer and it can be as simplified as you want it doesn't need to be super technical it can be these shapes from a physical object to a layout. Guys, I really think that this is a great resource to get you started and there's so much more in this book, but I really wanted to share it with you because I just feel like exercises are like the key to success in design. So like I said, it's good for you if you're starting out or if you want to keep going in your skills, if you're a full-time designer like me and you want to just have some tips hopefully this helped uh i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like and let me know if you want me to show more resources from more books i have things like that let me know in the comments if you need more like likes this because I am not here to hold anything back. I'm here to show you, help you. And if you can't afford these books, I'm here to show you what content is in these books to help. Okay, so yeah, let me know. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Ring the bell to get a notification when I upload and I will see you in my next video. Okay, bye. I have to talk about how my nails match my scrunchie. I need to talk about it. Please look. Okay, now you can go.